welcome back to our channel aviation enthusiasts today we're diving deep into the fascinating world of aircraft categories but before we jump into the exciting details let's take a moment to understand the basics the diverse world of aviation can be broken down into several categories let's start by listing the different categories of aircraft first up we have the broader definition of an aircraft an aircraft is simply any machine that can find support in the atmosphere from the reactions of the air, excluding support from the Earth's surface. Every single aircraft can be divided into two main subcategories, the ones that are heavier than air and those that are lighter than air. You may think, how is it even possible to have an aircraft that's lighter than air? That sounds completely ridiculous. Just watch the video and you'll see. Both of those subcategories are then further divided into two sections based on whether they have some kind of engine or not. These categories are called non-power driven and power driven aircraft. Let's begin with the most common type, the aeroplane. Aeroplanes are power driven, heavier than air machines that derive their lift during flight from aerodynamic reactions on fixed surfaces. But did you know that even within this category, there are further distinctions? Let's start with land planes. These airplanes can operate exclusively on land surfaces. They are your typical commercial jets, propeller planes, and more. Now let's talk about seaplanes. Seaplanes are designed to operate solely on water surfaces. They're commonly used for water landings and takeoffs, perfect for regions with abundant lakes or coastlines. Finally, we have amphibian aircraft. These versatile machines can operate on land and water surfaces, offering incredible flexibility for various missions. All of these are fixed wing aircraft. These are the workhorses of the aviation world. A fixed wing aircraft is heavier than air and relies on the dynamic reaction of the air against its stationary wings to support itself in all phases of flight. There is also another way of generating lift with a power driven heavier than air aircraft. These are called rotocraft, also known as rotary wing aircraft. These aircraft are supported in flight by the dynamic reaction of the air against their rotors, which spin on a substantially vertical axis. Gyroplanes or autogyros are a unique and lesser known rotorcraft category. These aircraft combine elements of both fixed wing airplanes and helicopters, offering a thrilling flight experience. Unlike helicopters, gyroplanes have unpowered rotor blades that auto-rotate, generating lift as air rushes over them during forward motion. This unique design provides stability and safety that sets them apart. Land gyroplanes are known for their versatility, making them suitable for various tasks from agricultural spraying to aerial observation. Land gyroplanes are often favored for their ability to access remote areas with rough or limited landing options. Sea gyroplanes are used for coastal surveillance, marine wildlife observation, and even water rescue missions. Amphibian gyroplanes can seamlessly transition between land and water, offering various applications including patrolling riverbanks, monitoring wetlands, and conducting search and rescue missions in challenging and dynamic environments. Now let's shift our focus to the undeniable stars of the rotorcraft world, helicopters. These remarkable machines are a marvel of engineering and their versatility is unknown. Whether you're fascinated by the sleek lines of a Bell 407 or the rugged power of a Boeing CH-47 Chinook, helicopters are undeniably one of the most iconic rotorcraft categories. Land helicopters are the backbone of aerial mobility, capable of taking off and landing on solid ground. They play crucial roles in various sectors, from emergency medical services to police operations and tourism. Sea helicopters are often used for offshore oil rig transport, marine time patrol, and search and rescue missions. Amphibian helicopters are frequently employed in roles like remote cargo transport to inaccessible regions, coastal surveillance, and even island hopping tourism adventures. Now, let's take a fun detour into the world of the ornithopter a unique and somewhat whimsical aircraft category. Ornithopters are inspired by the graceful flight of birds and insects attempting to replicate their wing flapping motion. While ornithopters are an official category, they remain more of a curiosity than a practical mode of transportation. The concept is undeniably charming, but in practice, ornithopters face significant challenges in achieving sustained and controlled flight. 
Due to their limited efficiency and the complexity of their mechanisms, they're not commonly seen in aviation today. Land ornithopters capture the imagination of aviation enthusiasts and serve as a testament to the human spirit of innovation and the pursuit of flight. Land, sea, and amphibian ornithopters are not used for anything helpful. Now, let's get into the science of how these aircraft achieve flight. Heavier than air aircraft, often called aerodynes, must create a force that pushes air or gas downwards, resulting in an equal reaction pushing the aircraft upwards. The most common method involves propelling the aircraft forward, typically using engines, while the wing shape displaces air above and below it. This creates greater air pressure below the wing, generating lift. It's the fundamental principle behind most modern airplanes. But there's another way to achieve lift, known as engine lift. This is primarily used in VTOL, or vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. These unique machines fire their engines vertically downward to push the craft upwards. Think of it as how rockets and missiles operate. So whether it's a sleek commercial jet, a seaplane gracefully landing on water, or a versatile amphibian aircraft, understanding the categories and the science behind flight is crucial to appreciating the marvel of aviation. Gliders are the embodiment of elegance and simplicity in the world of aviation. These unpowered aircraft are designed for soaring through the skies, relying on the natural forces of air currents and thermals. They are commonly used in recreation and competitive gliding, offering a unique sense of freedom as pilots harness the elements to stay afloat. While less common than their land counterparts, sea gliders are tailored for coastal regions and marine time environments. These graceful machines use ocean breezes and coastal thermals to glide above the water. Kites are a timeless symbol of human ingenuity and playfulness in aviation. While they may not transport people or cargo, they hold a special place in our hearts. These non-power driven aircraft take various forms, from colorful diamond shaped kites flown by children on sunny afternoons, to intricate and massive kites that are a spectacle at kite festivals. Let's explore another fascinating category of aircraft, the lighter than air aircraft, also known as aerostats. These unique flying machines are primarily supported by their buoyancy in the air. Lighter than air aircraft use the same principle that allows ships to float on water. They typically feature one or more large balloons or bags filled with gases like helium, hydrogen, or hot air. These gases are less dense than the surrounding air, allowing the aircraft to float gracefully through the skies. Now we enter the world of free balloons. Non-spherical free balloons come in various shapes, from the classic teardrop design to more intricate forms. These majestic vessels rely on the principle of buoyancy to float gracefully through the sky. The gas inside, typically helium or hydrogen, is less dense than the surrounding air, lifting the balloon and its passengers or payload into the heavens. Non-spherical balloons are commonly used for scientific research, aerial photography, and the sheer joy of floating among the clouds. Spherical free balloons are a testament to simplicity and elegance in aviation. These balloons, often perfectly round, harness the power of buoyancy to soar above landscapes with a sense of grace and timelessness. Captive balloons, unlike their free counterparts, are tethered to the ground. These stationary giants provide an elevated observation, photography, and communication platform. Captive balloons can be found at sporting events, offering breathtaking aerial views, or as surveillance tools and security operations, keeping a watchful eye from above. Non-rigid airships, often called blimps, have a flexible envelope that maintains its shape thanks to internal pressure. These iconic airships are used for advertising, aerial tours, and broadcasting, offering a distinctive and memorable presence in the skies. Semi-rigid airships strike a balance between flexibility and structure. These airships have a partially rigid framework which helps maintain their shape and control. They're employed in surveillance, advertising, and scientific research tasks. Rigid airships, often known as zeppelins, are the giants of the sky. These magnificent aircraft feature a rigid internal structure that supports the envelope. Historically, Zeppelins were used for long-distance passenger travel and military operations. While their role in aviation has evolved, they remain a symbol of luxury and grandeur in the annals of flight. 
outside of this whole categorization, there's a thing called RPA. In the past, the pilot was always on board the aircraft. As we all know, this is not the case anymore. When an aircraft is intended to be operated without a pilot, it falls into the unmanned category. An unmanned aircraft that's piloted by a remote pilot station is what we refer to as an RPA. Many of you have heard of or even flown a drone. RPA is just a fancy term for it. RPA operations involve more than just the aircraft itself. They rely on a system of associated components. These components include the RPS or remote pilot station and the all important C2 link, which stands for command and control. When you combine the RPA, the RPS and the C2 link with any launch or recovery equipment, you form a remotely piloted aircraft system or RPAS for short. Another way of categorizing aircraft is by their wake turbulence category. Every heavier than air aircraft generates wake turbulence, which begins when the aircraft rotates during takeoff and ends when the aircraft touches down when landing. We could say that the classic wake turbulence category chart is the one where every aircraft is either light, medium, heavy, or super based on the maximum takeoff weight of the aircraft. Based on studies, this division has been broken down into more accurate wake turbulence categories. To learn more about these, check out this video here. If you thought that there couldn't be possibly any more ways to categorize aircraft, you better think again. We promise you this is the last one. This is actually pretty important, so please stay with us until the end. The last list for today is the ICAO approach categories. All the major airports have approach procedures so that aircraft can land in low visibility or otherwise bad weather conditions. The challenge with these approach procedures is that different aircraft fly at different speeds when they approach the runway. If you think about an example of a small single propeller engine aircraft compared to a fast military jet or even a NASA space shuttle returning to our planet after a mission, their final approach looks completely different. In the ICAO approach categories, all the aircraft belong to a group from A to E based on the speed at which the aircraft will be flying on the final approach before landing. For example, a small Kesta 172 aircraft will do something between 90 and 150 knots during the initial approach and over the threshold of the runway, marked as VAT in the chart. The speed will be less than 91 knots. Therefore, that particular aircraft belongs to the approach category A. A common passenger aircraft, Airbus 320, will be flying between 160 and 240 knots during initial approach and slow down somewhere between 121 and 140 knots over the threshold, assigning this aircraft to category C. And where do you need this information, you may ask? This is actually more important to pilots than to air traffic controllers. When a pilot plans to fly to any airport, they must familiarize themselves with all the airport details, including the approach chart. This approach chart has specific minimum values for obstacle clearance, altitude, visibility, and cloud base, which must be respected when using the related approach procedure. Aircraft landing speed is the most significant performance factor affecting the determination of these minima. In other words, in our example case, the Airbus 320 pilot with his C-Class aircraft has to be aware of the visibility requirements and minimum descent altitudes relevant to the approach procedure they're planning to make. There it is, a complete guide on how different aircraft are categorized. I hope you learned something new today. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to this channel and turn on the notifications to be the first one to know when new stuff pops up. Until next time.